everyone. In this video, we are going to go over how to update records in Salesforce using a Salesforce loop. Naturally, because we're using a loop, we are going to be updating multiple records. So let's get started with describing the business challenge here. As you can see, I'm looking at the all contacts list view in a developer org. I've created a new field called account roles, and this is a pick list field that holds four different values, one of which is primary contact. In this scenario, the business has asked us to make sure that only one contact for each account can be listed as the primary contact. So we see right here, the Appleseed Enterprises account has two contacts, Bob Apples and Tina Apples, and that I am allowed to make them both the primary contact. And so what the business is asking is that if we select one contact as the primary, Salesforce will go and find all the other contacts and mark them as no longer the primary contact. So let me change Tina Apples back to uh, none for the primary contact, and then we'll get started building our flow. One more thing before we do, if you're curious what the account rules field looks like, so uh, you could rebuild it in your own org, it is a pick list field on the contact object, and it has four values, primary contact, primary contact spouse, event guest, and business partner. So feel free to recreate that or just follow along with the video, whatever works best. I'm going to navigate to the setup menu and I'm going to go to the flow section of Salesforce so we can build a new flow. Close out this pop-up and I'm going to select a new flow. Give this a second to load here. There we go. And I'm going to select a record triggered flow because we want this flow to trigger when the account role pick list is changed. And we will select contact as the object. And when a record is updated for uh, the flow configuration trigger. For condition requirements, all the conditions need to be met. And that condition is simply that the account roles pick list has been changed. And I guess we should add. Um, I guess we could be more specific here and say when the account role equals the primary contact instead of just any change. And then what we'll do is we'll use uh, this toggle here, when to run the flow, and we'll say only run it when a record is updated to meet this condition requirement. I think that'll be a little bit better. To optimize the flow, we are going to do actions and related records because we need to uh, work on other contact records. I am going to use the auto layout functionality here, or sorry, instead of using the auto layout, I will use the free form. And we need to get started by looking for a collection of records that we can iterate over. So a loop inside a flow allows us to perform the same action multiple times. And in order to perform that action, we need records that we are going to act on. And so that's called a collection in flows. And there's a couple different ways to get a collection, but typically what you'll do is you use a get element. So in this case, I'm going to drag the get records element to the canvas, and I'm going to call this get contacts. And here we are going to get records of the contact object. And what we're going to do is we are going to leverage the fields that exist on our first contact, and we're going to use those fields to find other contacts that are related to the same account. So specifically, I am going to use um, the account ID field here. And what we're doing is we're saying, OK, Salesforce, go get records of this object, the contact object, and find all the records who, whose account ID equals the exact same account ID as our current contact. And I'm going to do that by selecting the contact record global variable and then selecting the account ID field from the list. And so one contact will kick this flow off and then that contact will go, um, or we'll use the account ID of that contact to go and find other contacts with the exact same account ID. And therefore, all the contacts will be related to a single account. Because we need a collection, we need to store multiple records. So I'm going to say store all the records you find that meet these criteria, and I'll press done. I'll connect the start element to the get records element. And now we can drag a loop element to the canvas because we have our group of records that we want to act on 
And so now um, we can put the loop operator on the canvas. So I'll label this loop through contacts. And the collection that we're going to reference is just the contacts that we found in our get records element. So I'll select that and press done. Now I will connect the get records to the loop. And the next step is to create a collection, a second collection variable, that's going to hold the contacts after we're done updating them. And so that might be a little confusing, but I'll explain it further in a second. To do this, I need to click on the manager in the toolbox, select new resource. From the resource type, I'm going to select a variable. The data type, I will select record, and I'm gonna call this updated contacts. I'm going to check the box that allows multiple values. For the object, I will select the contact object, and then I'm going to press done. So now we have our uh, flow being kicked off at the start. We're getting all the contacts who have the exact same account ID. And now we're at the loop element where we need to take some action on all of these contacts. And so this is where an assignment element is used. So I'm going to drag the assignment to the canvas, and this will allow us to update the uh, fields for each item in the loop. And so I'm going to say update account role. And so what's important to know about the loops is that the loop logical operator creates a single record variable to represent the current item that is being iterated on. So let's say we got 10 contacts from our get records in a collection. The loop would start on the first record, the first contact record in the list, and would allow us to make changes to that record. And then once the changes were completed, we could move on to the second, third, and fourth. Now the changes will be the same for every record because we have to define them the same way in our assignment element. And I accidentally clicked away here, but you can see that the current item from the loop, the record single variable, is the uh, representation of the current loop item. So what we could do is we can say, okay, take the current item from the loop and set the account role on this to be empty. So we'll select um, an empty string here. And we'll press done. And so now when we connect our loop to our assignment, the way this logic works is that for each item in the collection, it will look at the account role field and set it to be nothing. Then we can use a second assignment to take that um, contact that's in the loop, add to update collection. Oops, I spelled collection wrong here. Correct that spelling. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to select the updated contacts record collection variable that we just created. And this is going to be, you could think of it like a cardboard box filled with records that we've already done the account role field update on. So I'm going to uh, select the updated contacts variable and I'm going to add as the operator the current item from the loop. And I'm just going to click the current item once and then I'm going to click the uh, white space on the assignment so that the entire variable is represented in the value field here. I'll press done and now we have two assignments and I can connect the first assignment to the second assignment and then I'll connect the second assignment back to the loop. And so you can see this is kind of forming a looping mechanism here where we collect all of the contacts that are uh, of the same account ID as the one that started this flow, then we loop through them. For each contact, we update the account role to be null or be empty. Then once it's updated, we add it to our update collection, and then we go back to the start of the loop to work on the next record. So if there's 10 records, we loop through 10 different times. And now after the processing is finished, we can specify another uh, operation and we could say, okay, go and update all of the records that are in our collection. So I'm going to select this second option here, use the IDs and all field values from our record or collection, and the record or collection that we want to update is going to be our updated contacts collection. And I'll just call this update other contacts. I'm going to press done, and then I will connect the loop 
to the update records. And we see here that it says after the last item of the loop, it will go and update our collection inside the database. And so our final step here is just to do one more look through at everything and make sure that all of our criteria are right. So our object is the contact object. Let's look at the trigger. We see that when a record is updated and the account role field is changed to a primary contact, whenever the record is updated to meet that condition requirement, we're going to kick off this flow. So that looks good. We're going to run it immediately. And we are going to get contacts where the account ID equals our um, the same account ID as the current contact. Let's add another condition in here where, just to be safe, we'll say that the ID of the contact that we find cannot equal the same ID as the current contact. And this will prevent us from clearing out the value of the account role field on the contact that's triggering the update. We'll press done. We can go look at the loop again. We're iterating through our collection, so that looks good. For each item, we will update the account role to uh, an empty string. Then we'll add it to our update collection. That looks good. And then finally, we update all of the updated contacts in the database. Great. So let's press save, and then let's activate it. And we can go test this out on our list view by picking two contacts who have the same account and changing the value of the pick list to be primary contact. And if this works as expected, Bob Apples should have his account role set to nothing. So it says the changes were saved. Let's refresh the list view. And we see that sure enough, Bob Apples had his account role uh, set to nothing. So let's now go and try it on another account. For example, the United Oil and Gas Corp account. We could set Arthur Song as the primary contact and press save. And then when we refresh this pick list and therefore refresh the data shown in it, Stella Pavlovla, that came out wrong, <laughs> Stella is no longer the primary contact. So it seems to be working as expected, and that is how you update records with a loop. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see, and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce flow tutorials designed to turn you into a flow ninja. With that said, have a great day.